Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the entire board and staff of the Cleveland Foundation, I'm delighted to welcome you to the 2021 Cleveland Foundation Annual Meeting presented by KeyBank. As we gather today, there is no doubt that the world is in a different place now than it was before this pandemic. And each one of us and our organizations have been transformed by the experiences of the past 18 months. It has been a time defined by loss, uncertainty, stress, and introspection. But it's also been a time of exceptional innovation, activism, heroism, and renewal. As we continue to fight this awful virus, I'm hopeful that we can emerge from this shared experience with new perspectives, deeper empathy, and the confidence that we can face any challenge together. Cleveland has certainly shown its ability to come together to face a challenge. In the midst of a global pandemic and even at the height of the stay-at-home orders, our community never stopped. We just found new ways to do what we do. For students and families who transitioned to remote learning without adequate technology and supports, our community stepped up to quickly distribute laptops, hotspots, and packaged meals that would normally be served at school. Spaces were opened for students who needed a safe and supportive place to attend their virtual lessons, while teachers and administrators worked around the clock to adapt this curriculum and navigate incredibly difficult decisions in ever-changing conditions. For artists who suddenly found themselves unable to earn a living through their performances and exhibitions, our community came together to launch emergency relief funds to help them get by. And although their income was severely impacted, artists never stopped creating. They offered virtual performances and socially distanced outdoor exhibitions, and they engaged audiences when we needed their art and their inspiration the most. For people who've been torn between their desire to protect themselves and others, by getting the COVID-19 vaccine and their fear of this newly developed medicine, our community has worked tirelessly to address those fears, sharing accurate and trustworthy information about the vaccine in different languages. Doctors, faith leaders, and trusted community members sat down with their patients, congregants, and neighbors to talk through the decision and encourage vaccination. Our community partnered with state and federal agencies to make the vaccine widely available in a matter of weeks, launching a successful mass vaccination clinic that administered more than 260,000 shots. These efforts continue. Just this month, partners from the Greater Cleveland COVID-19 Rapid Response Fund supported the launch of a grassroots vaccine outreach campaign designed and led by residents in neighborhoods across Cleveland. We are pleased to see more people getting the shot as it offers our very best hope for saving lives and bringing this pandemic to an end. And although they happen quietly on streets and in neighborhoods across Northeast Ohio, we can't overlook the countless individual acts of kindness that occurred over the past year. Neighbors were checking in on neighbors People sat down at their sewing machines to make masks for friends and strangers alike. Restaurants and home cooks prepared food for people in need, and countless prayers and good wishes were sent up around the clock on behalf of others. While a pandemic of this scale was new for all of us, in many ways it only amplified the challenges and conditions that far too many people experience on a daily basis, including food and financial insecurity, chronic health conditions, and the toxic effects of systemic and individualized racism and discrimination. I'm hopeful that we can use the experience of this pandemic to make lasting changes that get to the root of these issues. I'm optimistic because of the incredible solidarity creativity and resiliency that have been seen across our community. As Greater Cleveland's Community Foundation, the experiences of the past year have underscored 
our responsibility to the people and organizations of Cuyahoga, Lake, and Geauga counties. At the Foundation, we were privileged to be able to operate remotely, and we saw this as an important step to help slow the spread of the virus and protect those who couldn't work from home. But even as we transitioned to remote operations to protect public health, we never slowed our efforts to assist Greater Cleveland. In fact, we increased our annual grant making by nearly 15% compared to 2019. We reached out to our grantee partners and donors via Zoom meetings, phone calls, text messages. We accelerated our grant cycle from a monthly to a weekly basis to respond more quickly to the needs in Cuyahoga Lake and Geauga counties. And we worked with partners across sectors to support and launch community funds, including the Cleveland COVID-19 Rapid Response Fund, the Greater Cleveland Digital Equity Fund, and the Cleveland Black Futures Fund. I must acknowledge the incredible generosity of Cleveland Foundation donors who stepped up to support local nonprofit organizations and address needs across Greater Cleveland during this very difficult time. And of course, I'd like to acknowledge the Foundation staff and board who I believe worked harder than at any time in our 107-year history. We have an opportunity to turn the disruption of the past year into a new way of doing things, and it must start here in our community. We have seen a groundswell of momentum to eliminate the widespread structural racism and prejudice that continue to impact Black, Hispanic, Asian, Indigenous, disabled, LGBT+, Muslim, Jewish, and other communities. How can we continue this momentum to realize a more just and inclusive society? This work must happen. It must happen in classrooms, boardrooms, voting booths, doctor's offices, and in our own backyards. Each one of us has responsibility and a role to play in this effort. How can we help more greater Clevelanders get back to work at jobs that offer a livable income for their families as well as opportunities for advancement in their careers? In the manufacturing sector, which accounts for 50% of our region's economy and continues to grow, we know there are employers looking to hire for jobs that pay family-sustaining wages, but they struggle to find employees who have the skills they need. This is a disconnect that we can solve through strategies like sector partnerships that bring together industry and the community to set shared goals and align resources to address workforce challenges. As we create pathways to opportunity, how can we continue to spur inclusive economic growth in our region to create even more jobs and attract new residents? I believe we must focus on innovative sectors with a high potential for growth, building on our region's strengths in healthcare, research, water technologies, and smart manufacturing. As we promote economic growth, how can we ensure that the leaders and workforce in these sectors represent the diversity of our community, especially people who have historically been underrepresented? And as we continue to see the alarming effects of climate change impacting lives across the globe, we must ensure that future economic growth does not come at the expense of the environment or the health of our people. It's become increasingly clear that the health of our economy is closely tied to the health and well-being of our residents. How can we do more to ensure that greater Clevelanders of all ages have access to health care, nutritious foods, counseling, and other supports they need to succeed in school and the workforce. In a city known for world-class health care, all residents should be able to see a doctor regularly. As a community, we must work together to make this a reality. Finally, underpinning all that we do, how can we strengthen our democracy and ensure ongoing progress in this great American experiment. I must say that never in my lifetime have I been so concerned about the future of our democracy. It's clear that we must restore trust 
in our democratic systems and institutions, and we must ensure that every eligible person in our country is able to cast their vote without unnecessary or politically motivated hurdles designed to keep them from the polls. How can we support the collective civic power of residents to ensure their voices are heard by the officials who are elected to represent them? Expanding access to trusted, accurate information via excellent journalism and strengthening the levers of accountability must be part of the solution. Here in Cleveland, we have a watershed mayoral election coming up in November. As we prepare for the next chapter in our city's leadership story, I want to acknowledge the legacy and the work of Mayor Frank Jackson over the past 16 years. I'd like to thank Mayor Jackson for his steady leadership and commitment to Cleveland residents during his time in office. Mayor, I have so appreciated your friendship and your administration's unwavering support of the Cleveland Foundation. It's my hope that whoever is elected in November will build on Mayor Jackson's accomplishments and continue the progress for our beloved city. We have an abundance of opportunities ahead of us, and it all starts here in our community. As we've heard over the past, proximity matters. As your community foundation, the Cleveland Foundation is committed to being proximate to you and to everyone who shares love for Greater Cleveland. This afternoon, we're broadcasting from the heart of Midtown and just a few blocks away from the site of the Cleveland Foundation's future home at the corner of East 66th Street and Euclid Avenue. Construction on the building is underway and we plan to move in during the fall of 2022. This move will usher in a new era for the Cleveland Foundation and a new way of working with the community. Our new home will provide accessible community space for the people of Greater Cleveland to come together, to work together, and celebrate together. A public cafe staffed by special needs residents will serve food and beverage options, and it will be operated by a local mission-driven organization that's committed to social impact. There will be dedicated gallery space to showcase the work of local artists and creators through rotating displays curated by the community. And we're so excited to relocate the Stephen A. Mentor Conference Center from our current offices to our new home so that nonprofit organizations can continue to enjoy free meeting and event space to bring people together. A multi-purpose room on the ground floor will host community events, classes and dance and other performances and activities, while a multi-level event space between the second and third floors will immerse visitors in the Annisfield Wolf Book Award canon. Finally, indoor-outdoor event and meeting spaces on the second and third floors will feature terraces with sweeping views of our lovely city. We want you, all of you, to feel that this is a place where you're welcome, where you can be inspired to partner with others, and where you can see your future possibilities and the possibilities for Greater Cleveland. We're so excited to welcome all of you into our new home as soon as construction is complete. But we want you to know this is not just a physical space that is changing. As you'll hear more about later in the afternoon's program, our new strategic direction involves the foundation shifting from a doing for the community to a working with the community paradigm. I'm sure you'll notice and feel the shift in the months and years ahead. As I reflect on the state of our community today, I'm aware that there's a great deal of work ahead of us, most immediately in our efforts to bring this pandemic to an end and truly begin our recovery. However, I'm filled with optimism for Cleveland's future. I think about the ways that we moved mountains together over the past year through partnership and shared learning. I think about the generous spirit of people across our community who selflessly gave resources and energy to help others. And I think about the passionate young people who aren't waiting for change. They're building movements to make it happen. For more than 107 years, the partnership, generosity, and passion 
of greater Cleveland residents has fueled the work of the Cleveland Foundation. During that time, our community has faced a number of crises and challenges, including not one but two global pandemics. What we've proven each time is that we can do more together than any of us can do on our own. That's the essence of community, and it's what drives us as your community foundation. Now, as we look to the future and what we want to create for the next generation, it is, as always, your partnership, your generosity, and your passion that will make it all possible. Thank you very much.